Hey guys, it's Kenny with Flytime RC. I'm going to go through a build video of the wing for my low wing V-tail that I recently built. This is going to be part of a three, uh, three video series where I'm going to show you how to build the wing, the V-tail, and the fuselage. Now this wing can be used as a low wing uh, with a little bit of dihedral like I'm going to show you, or you could keep it a flat wing and use it as a high wing. I've built similar wings, uh, the same size for other uh, V-tail planes and used them as a high wing and they're just as good. I did decide to go with the low wing on this one with a little dihedral because I found that I can fly a little faster and a little bit more stably uh, with the uh, small amount of dihedral and uh, doing it as a low wing, but either way works fine. So we're going to get into the video. Um, so we're going to start off with two sheets of regular foam board. Now I get mine from the local dollar store. They're like, uh, I think they're more like a dollar 25 now each, but they're super cheap. So I get two sheets. They're around 29 to 30 inches wide each. That doesn't matter too much because we're not going to be using the full span of these. But what I do is I put them both together and I'll tape them together on one side on the back side and you can't really see that in this first photo but it's taped together on the back side and then what i'll do is i'll flip it over and i'll basically cover the entire area of the wing on the foam board with a uh, two inch packing tape now you can use uh, colored tape if you like uh, basically anything anything you want as far as the tape goes I like to have tape on all of my planes, especially the wings, because it just makes them stronger. And um, and also, like, if you end up flying, like, after a day it rains or something like that and you land in wet grass, it's totally protected. And so it makes a big difference. So here I am covering the wing with tape. And you can use a credit card. I just had a small piece of plywood that I was using for another build uh, to kind of wipe the tape down. That way there's no bubbles in it. Um, and uh, I try to do that for a little bit past what the wing width is actually going to be. And that way I know every single inch is covered. And also uh, cover uh, the area for the wing and then also as far down as the other parts. Now we're gonna be able to build this entire plane out of two pieces of foam board. So you can cover um, almost all of the two pieces of foam board with packing tape if you'd like. So let's go on to the next one. So here I mark out, after everything's taped, I'll flip it back over and get to the paper side. And for this plane, this uh, wingspan is 36 inches or about 91 and a half centimeters. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but somewhere in that range. Um, this one I built uh, in inches, but I'm, I'm gonna have all the uh, centimeters on here too. So this is um, marked out. 36 inches on either side, just to kind of give me um, the full width of the, the wingspan. And and I draw my lines around 18 inches long. You can draw your line all the way down the whole uh, foam board if you want. It doesn't matter. It just kind of gives me a guide to let me know where the end of the wing is uh, for the whole thing. And then I'll just usually overdraw it. I'll just go a little bit too far so I know that my max width is 36 all the way down. So this next photo, um, I show the actual drawing of the wing. So this wing, because it's a low wing and it's going to be kind of a sporty plane, I make these kind of wings usually tapered. And so let's see, I'll try to explain the whole thing. So we have the, the full, um, the full cord in the center will be, um, 6.25 inches or 16 centimeters. That's going to be the full cord. And then that's on the bottom part of the drawing. And then on the top part, you can see it's um, five inches or about 12 and a half centimeters. And I like to have the top part of the wing a little short. That way I can have room to cut out the ailerons. So if you look over at the right side of the picture, you can see that I have the part where the spar is, which is a half inch or 1.5 centimeters, is drawn across the whole center of the wing. 
Um, and then below that is the aileron, which I, I kind of just make these random and, and it really kind of depends on the, the kind of flying I'm going to be doing. Like if it's a fast wing, a fast plane like this one, the ailerons, I usually make them fairly uh, small, but I'll make them a little bit wider and I'll also make them move a little bit farther because when you're going really fast, um, you don't need a lot of aileron movement to, um, to get a lot out of the plane, it'll, it'll turn really fast. So here I just decided to do um, eight inch wide or 25.5 centimeters by three quarter uh, width or about two centimeters. Um, and then the uh, the taper of the wing, the, out, the end cord on the tip of the wing is five inches or about 12.5 centimeters. Um, and then uh, right, right above that is the spar, which is a half inch or 1.5 centimeters. And then I drew another line from the front of the spar to where the wing is actually going to fold over on itself. And that's a uh, three quarter inch or about two centimeters. And I'll explain that later in the video, how that's going to work. And then the top part of the wing, the tip is, um, going to be, uh, a little over four. I guess I didn't write it in here. A little bit over four inches. You can see though um, how I came up with the taper. Um, if you look at the center of the photo, um, you'll see that I've basically drawn a line from the top of the board and I've measured down at the 36 inch mark about one inch or 2.5 centimeters. And that's what gave me my taper. And then um, I did a similar thing for the bottom part of the wing. Um, I drew from the the widest part of the cord, which is six and a half or 6.25 inches. And then I measured back um, down to five inches from the folding point in the wing. Um, and that's what gave me my taper. So let's go to the next one. Um, you should be able to see, uh, hopefully a little bit better in this photo, the measurements. Maybe I'll do a couple extra photos in here, uh, zooming in so you guys can pause and you guys can see the measurements. So let's go ahead and go on to the next one after this. I've drawn the sparring and I'm just kind of trying to make the most out of this foam board because like I said, we can build this entire plane out of these two sheets of foam board. So as you can see here at the bottom uh, left hand part of the picture here, you can see the spar is drawn out. It's a half inch wide by the full width of the wing, which is 36 inches or 91 and a half centimeters. Um, so it's a half inch wide or 1.5 centimeters wide. And we just need one, one piece of foam board thickness for this spar. It really doesn't take much. Um, so all that's drawn out. Now we're going to get ready to start cutting and I'm going to insert a few uh, photos here so you guys can see hopefully um, all of the measurements really well. Um, so we're going to get on to cutting. So here you'll see that everything is cut out. I've cut out the outside perimeter of the uh, wing and I've also cut out the spar. Um, now the spar, uh, something I didn't do, I didn't take pictures of and something I didn't do in this one and sometimes I will do is if you notice that the spar has a break in the middle where the um, where the two pieces of foam board are taped together. Now, doing a, a wing with dihedral, this works out great because it bends easy. And I'll show you guys that later in the video. But in uh, other planes where I do, if I were to use this wing as a top wing, and keep it straight with no dihedral, I would actually use one piece of foam board and just center it instead of having a break in the foam board like this, I would just center it and then add on to the ends to make it a little bit longer. That way there's no break in the center. So it makes it a little bit stronger because you don't want the bend, the wing to bend. But in this case, it's going to have dihedral. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, I also cut the ailerons. Um, the aileron, when you cut it out, um, here you can see, I, I gave, uh, a few millimeters or about an eighth of an inch, um, between the end of the aileron and the wing itself. That way it can move without getting caught up or anything like that. And then when you cut 
the aileron hinge where it actually moves. You only cut through the foam board about 90%. Um, you don't want to cut all the way through it. So let's go on to the next one. So here's uh, just another quick photo, different angle of the wings. So you guys can see how everything's cut out. And then a close up of the aileron cut with a few millimeters of foam board cut out so that we can make sure it moves really easily. So here, um, this is my own technique and you guys can kind of figure out your own or you can do what I do. Um, I have the pen already um, out for drawing and marking everything out. So what I do is I actually use the pen, the tip of the pen to pre-crease the foam board at the hinge where we're gonna be bending the wing back on itself. And I first use the tip of the wing or first uh, use the tip of the pen in the wing and then I pulled the tip out and I use the the end of the pen where it's a little wider and I'll kind of crease the ring on uh, the wing on both sides and this just kind of uh, puts a big dent where the hinge is going to be where it folds back on itself and allows it to bend much much easier which is what you want you don't want it to be hard to bend because you want this wing to be able to fold back on itself and make a nice rounded edge Another thing you'll have to do before we bend the wing back on itself is pull the paper off of the top part of the wing. As you can see here, it's only foam. So um, that way it will bend. It'll make a nice round curve. So here next, you can see we've creased the wing where the top part is going to bend. We've pulled the paper off and we've glued in the spar. So this bar doesn't need much glue. I just, uh, I let my glue gun get pretty warm and run one long bead across the, the whole thing. And earlier you could see that I have marks um, are down the entire wing. So you can put the spar right in between the marks and make sure it's set exactly where it needs to go. And you just do one bead of glue there. And you could just press it down uh, all the way through and make sure that the, gl the glue is uh, spread out evenly across the spar. So here you can see where we put the glue along the spar here. So I also do a little bit of glue on the front of the spar on top of underneath it, just every couple inches or so, just to give it a little extra strength. So also there will be um, glue in the, uh, in the hinge of the wing and then also on top so on top of the spar so you'll see here that there's glue in the hinge area just go one line down the whole thing and then on top of the spar as well there'll just be one kind of squiggly line all the way down the top of the spar and try to let your glue gun get really hot that way you can put out all this glue at the same time because obviously you don't want it um drying up on you so then we fold the wing back on itself and I you I have a four foot um, straight edge that I use you guys can use anything you could use your hands too but this just helps me get the entire wing in one shot um, to hold the whole thing down equally so I have equal um, pressure across the whole wing to make sure that it folds nicely and uh, it hinges nicely uh, so you can see here in this picture that that I'm holding it down, you can see the nice round curve of the wing. Here, you can see the end result after it's dried. And you'll probably notice on the left uh, that I didn't trim the top side of the wing so that the uh, top side of the wing, it, it goes flush with the bottom side. You could do that if you like. Um, I've done it on some wings um, and some not, and I haven't really noticed any difference in performance as far as uh, if it flies any faster or not. I know on my super fast speed wing, uh, low wing V-tail that I built, I did that and maybe it helped, maybe it didn't. I'm not really sure, but I've never noticed a difference. So that's up to you if you guys want to trim the top side of the wing and make it flush with the bottom side, or if you just want to have it basically square like I have it. Uh, something we'll be doing uh, here in a second, I'll show you guys with the ailerons. Uh, we're going to be kind of... Uh, covering up that that gap that's there that um that's at the back side of the wing on the left so it's not going to really matter too much so that's the wing glued so 
here's the ailerons. <clears throat> so with the ailerons, we want to unfold them and cut about a 45 degree angle on the wing side, not the aileron side, but the wing side so that the aileron can bend up between 30 to 45 degrees. Um, I, I tend to go a little farther than it really needs to just to make sure that I have enough room. Uh, so this is around 35 to 40 degree angle or so. Uh, but you just want to clear enough foam without cutting through <clears throat> so that it can bend. So here, I'm showing you guys how I strengthen up the joint on the aileron and also the tape that I'm putting on here will close the gap between the top side of the wing and the bottom side of the wing so that if you don't taper the top side to perfectly uh, go flush with the bottom side of the wing, it will actually close the gap and make it a smooth transition from the top to the bottom of the wing. This also strengthens the hinge quite a bit. And you can see we have full aileron movement there and it's much, much stronger. So here you can see after you've taped it completely, you can see how the transition between the top side of the wing and the bottom side is pretty smooth. The tape um, will basically let the air pass right over and this will help with aerodynamics. And this is another reason why I haven't been uh, cutting the wing to make it transition to the bottom side uh, perfectly because when I tape the ailerons to strengthen them, this just covers the gap and, and just makes it easier. So here, our wing is just about done now. So here, um, to give it dihedral, we're going to... Um, cut the tape down the center of the wing on the bottom side of the wing um, and we're going to bend it and I'll show you here in this little snippet where I put it up on four pieces of foam board to give me a little over an inch um, bend of dihedral and you'll see here where the glue kind of comes out in the center there we'll glue all the way down the center of the wing and then any excess glue we can wipe off. And then, let's see, I'll show you guys uh, here. Once the glue has dried, you can run a piece of packing tape down the center of the wing um, from, one, from the front of the wing to the back to cover up that joint that we just glued in the center. And then you can see now it has a little bit of dihedral. It's about... It's about a centimeter and a half on either side, which is just fine for a small wing like this. It'll help quite a bit with stability. And we have our ailerons that are moving and they hinge really well. Everything's taped up and strong. And you can see the, the wing here. Um, you can see the profile of the wing and see what it looks like. And it's basically ready to go. At this point, you can put it on a low wing or you can uh, put it on the top side of a fuselage. Whatever you want to do, if you want to put it on the top or the bottom, this wing will work great either way. And if you want to skip the dihedral uh, part um, and you can just run it as a flat wing, that's totally fine too. I've done the same thing with the very similar wing design and it performs really good. So... That's it for this one. Um, let me know if you guys want some more information on this video. These are pretty hard to make because I can't film and do audio at the same time. Usually this takes a good amount of time to do and I'm always getting distracted. We have five kids, so I can't really d record and make videos and in, in, in real time. So I'm trying to do my best here, trying to take pictures and video as I go and try to put something together for you guys so you guys can build one of these of your own. So this is part one, and next we'll have the V-tail, and then lastly I'll have the fuselage that I built for this plane, and um, we'll have a full working plane, and then 
you guys have probably already seen the flying videos. If you haven't, I'll link them in the description for this video. And uh, you guys can see how well this thing performed. But that's it for this one, guys. I'll see you in the next one.